Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be talking about crack repair. This is a cast iron head and this particular head cracked up here because it froze. When the water freezes with no antifreeze, it expands and it cracks in odd places. We're not going to be talking about where they crack and crack in and out places or anything like that. We're going to be talking about crack repair and we're going to fix this crack without welding it. So it'd be a cold repair where it's not invasive um, in this particular areas there's no stress here um, it's just keeping the water from getting into the oil so how are we going to repair this cylinder head we're going to repair it with a product called a plug kit and made by iron tight you need some contact shop mom and what we're going to basically do is we're going to drill a hole then we're going to use a tapered reamer not a standard reamer but a tapered reamer and then we're going to use a tapered tap so the threads are going to be tapered basically like a pipe plug if you're out in the field and you have a big crack and you can't get any of this stuff could you use pipe plugs you most definitely could and then we're going to put in a cast iron plug so the plug itself is cast iron and the, the cylinder head is cast iron. You can use this in, on blocks, you can use this on anything that's cast iron, tractors. Um, I learned this the old school way as a kid. I would just plug all day long. Basically we're going to drill it, ream it, tap it, and then plug it. Alright, so let's get going. I'm going to aim you down here and we're going to do a crack repair to show you how easy this really is without welding. Um, so we're not adding more stress to the cylinder head. When we have a crack, basically what we want to do is drill two holes at the end slightly past the crack. So as we start expanding the metal, we don't want to keep expanding the crack. So come on down here. Let me aim you down and let's get to it. First thing we're going to do to find the crack is we're going to be using a magnet and magnetic powder. I have already have a video on magna fluxing, so this isn't going to be a video on magna fluxing, but we're going to mag the head and find the crack. Well, if you can see it, you probably should focus in on it. And there we go. So we can see the crack right in the center there from up there to down there i've highlighted it with the marker and you can see the crack now i'm going to go ahead and center punch both ends i'm going to take a punch and lightly put some punch marks so that once i take the magnet off i'll still be able to see the crack we're going to go slightly past it and we're going to go ahead and drill two holes to keep the crack from moving any further I don't know if you can see here, but even if you don't have a magnet flux, you can see here we thought it went there and it actually turns and comes around this way. More importantly, what I want to show you there is look at how the crack has come up underneath it. We thought it ended there. I did a little spot. So even if you didn't have a magnet flux, once you start drilling, you can see there's a crack right there without a magnet flux. You see how just shows right up on there so we want to go ahead and go a little bit further past it
all right so you can see the crack which we thought stopped right there and it does not go any further this way it just ends right there so we want to go past it just like we did and now we can drill a hole if you see a little crack in it go a little further past it this way and right there this is the wall casting is here for this push rod hole so that's why it ended right there so we're going to be right there is going to be our first plug it goes around this way comes around turns this way goes to grandma's house and ends over here let's go ahead and see where it ends on that side see it's ending right at the middle of my drill which is okay as long as we get all of the crack gone then we're doing okay all right so there's our two endpoints there and there and you can see the crack and comes around all the way around this way it also has another crack over here as well all right Let's go ahead and start our crack repair. We can start from this side, work this way, this side, or work that way. Since this isn't a crucial area and it's underneath the valve cover, it really doesn't make a difference where you start or stop. If this was in a combustion chamber or anywhere where the plug could fall out and hurt something, we would end the crack plugging um, underneath a, head, a gasket. An example is... If we were on this side in the combustion chamber and we had a crack going across the seat what I would want to do is I could start here go this way and end the plug underneath the seat then we'll machine it out put in a seat it cannot come undone um, we, we cannot lose a plug if it went all the way across this way up this way we would end a plug underneath the gasket so end it under the gasket or end it under a seat if we leave just one plug and we leave it in a combustion chamber, um, it could loosen up and come out and cause some damage. We don't want to do that. All right, we drilled from one side to the other. I actually went up one more in the top. Once you start drilling, if you see a little crack inside, go and stop and move over one more. You want to go to the end of it. You don't want to stop and have a crack in your drill because it, there's because it's not going to fix it. You want to get rid of the crack. So now I've drilled on both sides. Now as we start to expand this area in here, which it will expand because it is tapered. All right, since it is tapered, once we start to screw in the plug, it starts to expand it. Okay, basically what we're going to use, which you know what this is. I'm going to use this to screw in my plugs. I have this which is just a quarter inch on both sides and I'll use that to run my reamer and to run my tap okay let's get over here you see I've drilled the hole what are we going to do now that's right you are correct sir we are going to ream it Looking to see what's underneath my hole. There it is. Crack is completely gone on one side. Oops, now that we've reamed it, I'm going to tap it. Also a key to success is older heads are thicker castings and a real good candidate for repair. New thin casting heads, there's not much there to hold a plug. 
So, a newer thin casting head, if you can't get a good quarter inch in, then I would probably suggest don't repair it. Because you want some thickness to the casting to be able to get enough threads in there and hold the plug. Hmm. I'm getting there a little further. I'm right up against the wall, and that's also making it fun. See if we can go down a little further. going down the side of a wall which makes it slightly difficult but as you can see I just reamed it several times all right can you see what I've done look at there Okay, so I've used the reamer. This is the tapered reamer and went in the hole. And at first, I've actually went in several times to get my angle just right. And I'm going right down the side of this wall on the inside. There's a wall in there. So you can't go this way or when you hit it, it'll just stop. So I kept on just going up, up this way till I'm in the side of the wall using the reamer to ream the hole. Once we got that, this is a tapered tap. And I'm going down the side of the wall the wall i'm talking about is this wall you see here it's on the underside going down the wall the wall goes straight down so we're right on the side of it now and as you can tell i've got a pretty good angle to it now there you go and that's the wall i'm talking about you see how it turns here well underneath it doesn't turn here it goes straight on the bottom side it'd be the opposite of this it'd be going like that so we're right up against the wall now we are can you see that so there's the 
hole. I wish you could see the inside, what I'm talking about. Maybe we can. I don't know if I made it easy. There we go. See the inside? So you see how far down we've gone? Down that wall. It's pretty far down. We've, we've gone the whole thickness of the head. You see on this side, it's not as thick as it is on that side. But we've tapped all the way down it. All right. Now, we'll move on to the second part of our plugging ahead. All right, I'm using a stuff called Fluid Weld. You don't have to use fluid weld. You could use uh, Loctite sealer. We used to use copper coat growing up. Any kind of thread sealer would work. Um, this is fluid weld. It's made for putting in seats and crack repair. And we're basically gonna just screw it in. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Let's just put this puppy in. And that's basically all it is. I'm going to give you a couple other tips on how to interlock them. Probably even get the right socket as well. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and cut that off. And then what we're going to do is put uh, another one right next to it. And we're going to interlock it. And we're going to keep going down the road, interlocking them one after another until we end up over here. I have a cutoff wheel. I have different size wheels. And when they get worn out, I'll actually replace them and save the little ones for times like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do a little light cut right in there. Excuse the noise, we'll cut the audio down just a little bit. Watch your eyes, put your safety glasses on, everybody. Mm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that on this one, but let's give it a try. I know you're probably thinking you can't see what I'm doing. What? Look at there. So, all right, so I put a little gouge in it. So when I come in here and tap it, it'll break off. I know a lot of people that just tighten them up and break them off flush, but they don't go flush. They go underneath the deck. And if we only have a thin wall up here to hold threads, we don't want to lose one thread doing it there. Uh, my uncle would also take a sharp chisel and put the sharp chisel right there, hit it, put some indentures in it, knock it off. Also, my next plug is going to come in right here next to that one a lot of times I'll take a die grinder and put a little spot right there but we're gonna do it the old school way all right here we go Usually I would use air, but I don't want to hurt y'all. All right, as you can tell, I drilled my second hole and I'm interlocking it with this plug here, barely drilling into it. That plug won't be able to come out because this plug is going to hold it in place and so on and so forth all the way down to there.
you don't necessarily need a Magnaflux. If you can see the crack, if it's been cracked for a while, it will be rusty right through there. So you'll see the crack. Oh yeah, it's most definitely far enough now. And a lot of times, this plug can be used more than once. If I only use that much of it to go inside and I cut it off, I could still use the rest of it by tapping further. These plugs are kind of expensive, so you can tell. I'll even keep these for holes that I can go in far enough. And a plug is a plug is a plug is a plug. A little bit of fluid weld. It literally says on there withstands temperatures to 3,000, withstands temperatures with 3,000 degrees. This amazing space age polymers that outperforms, I always joke around, I tell everybody, we're using space age polymers and they're like, oh yeah, fancy words. And they are fancy words. But um, it actually does say that. I wasn't gonna read the rest of it because it's, I just find it uh, entertaining. Um, all right then. Which oh, that's uh, 3,000 degrees. So you could put it in underneath an exhaust seat and that would be fine. Um, they say you use it to fill the crack and then peen over it and it's good, good to go. I've never done that. I'm old school. I'm gonna go ahead and put some plugs in it. And I'm torquing that dude in there without breaking it. After you break a few, you'll know how much is too much. Once again, we're gonna cut that off. Watch your ears, watch your eyes. Watch your buddy's eyes, your buddy's ears. Don't be scared. I'm going to do all this before we do any guide work. Um, we're going to machine these off of here anyway and put a new set of valve guides so there's not a problem. But you don't want to do this at the end. Go ahead and do it before. It's pretty invasive. Um, voila, if you wanted to, you can take this to a grinder, grind it, and look, you still have three or four threads to use for the next plug. This is a little on the short side, but you get my drift. I'm looking where the crack is. You can see it in when you drill. That's what I'm saying, you kind of don't need a mana flux. And I could easily right now lean it. And if if I was off to one side, I could lean it and start moving the, my hole that I'm drilling that way. Or I could drill it this way, that way. Old school, just letting it go where it wants to go. Once again, I've interlocked it and I'm touching right down the side of that plug there. That plug is not gonna come out. That plug is holding that plug. That plug is not gonna come out. So on and so forth. It's a matter of repeating, repeating, repeating. Oh, <laughs> 
There we go. This is one of the plugs that I've used before. And after I cut it off, I just took it to a grinder and put a little bevel on it. And now it's still a usable plug. If it doesn't go in far enough, just go ahead and tap a little further. And now I got two uses out of every plug. Tip of the day, um, I've seen people throw away plugs and it's like, well, hold on. If you can see, this is a pile. All right. As you can tell, these are some new plugs, and there's a pile of used plugs that still have an extra life. If the whole, if you can get past it and keep it tapping, um, then that will help you. What I've also done is sometimes a wall behind her and you can't put the tap all the way in. So I have taps that are cut in different lengths to allow me to get further down if there's a wall behind it. Um, all just tips of the day. This also helps to lubricate the threads because we're just on raw cast iron. Tip. I'm grabbing it from here so I could feel how much tension I'm putting on there without breaking the tap. Or the plug, should I say. All right. Stand clear. So far, I haven't broken any underneath the deck, which is actually pretty good. That's what you want to do. So again, I'm looking inside my drill to see the crack. What I'm talking about is right in the center. There you go. You can see it there. There you go. You can see the crack and I am drilling through the center of the crack. All right, you can see where the plugs we have right now. One, two, and three. I'm starting my next one right there. Move the camera back a little bit so I have room to work. In this this particular instance, we can start from both sides and work our way in because we don't need to have one plug underneath something. It's underneath the valve cover. A plug is not going to come loose anyway. But I'm going to go ahead and come this way with it. Like I said, if you want to, like I said, if you wanted to speed stuff up, you could most definitely use a drill and use the reamer. But generally, if you speed stuff up, you can't have the feel of it.
that would be nice just a hair more because like I said we can get two per plug because you only need to go as thick as the casting any more than that is just sticking through the, the water port um, not gonna hurt anything maybe even enhance cooling a little bit I did say maybe different plug that's just about there Forget your space age polymers. safety glasses on. What I'm doing is I'm putting a little cut on the front side. The back side is the plug so as I bend it it just breaks right off. It's cast iron just like the cylinder head itself. I'm looking in the hole to see my crack. I've shown you that. I can see the crack right there. And I'm right in the middle of it. When I come through the bottom, I'm drilling, I'm drilling when I come to the bottom, once I pass the, the cast iron, the plug is still next to it. So when you come out to the bottom, it wants to hit that plug that you just did, but the, you've already come through the cast iron top. Be real careful, it'll catch the drill bit and snap a bit off real quick and that's just a little tip of the day. I don't know if we'll leave that in or edit it out. I'm liking that. I 
I wanted to make sure I got enough of interlocking. I was barely right next to the plug. And that's the key, is that you want to get plug to plug. But if you, ha if you drill half the plug, you'll just use up a lot more plugs. And all you got to do is make sure you do touch into it and get rid of the crack. Um, then you want to go in by just a little bit. Let it touch the last plug just a little bit. When you're done and you grind this off, if somebody magnafluxes it later, um, depending on how good you are, it'll look like a weld. It'll just look like if somebody did the most beautiful laying of dimes on top of this. You welders are, will know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go in a little further so that I can use one of the used plugs. That would probably work, but... Liking it. Space age polymers. The fluid well is generally a little more fluid than this. It's a little dried up, but still working. And the hundred dollars a bottle, you know, I'm gonna use all of it. It's not a hundred dollars a bottle, I'm just trying to put it out there just to... So when you call a shop mom ask, how much is that? And then she says, it's thirty dollars a bottle, you go, dang, it's a good price. I heard somewhere it was a hundred.
Watch your eyes. Or ears. Watch your ears and your eyes. Let me go ahead and show you what talking about these plugs. They're all interlocking. So I'm interlocking all the plugs. And as you can see, I've caught this last plug. And as far down as you can see, I'm actually in to the plug. Might not help. There you go. See the old down there, the plug, the threads from the other plug, because it is tapered. So I'm actually into the plug, and that's what we're doing. We're interlocking all of these plugs. Like I said, when we're done, it's going to look like a well. It's going to have these little rounded pieces here. And remember, they are tapered, so as you go down, they get smaller. But we want to make sure we get rid of all of the crack. We're almost there, but you can tell it's going to be a while. There's my last plug there. As they're going in, and I'm putting these in tapered, it's actually stretching all of this. It's getting it real good and tight. So, all right, I'm gonna keep going. I don't know if y'all wanna see the rest of it or just grind this off and show you what it looks like when it's finished. But let's go ahead and keep going and I'll edit out what y'all don't wanna see. Let me know in your comments if you wish I would've showed it all. It'd be a little late, wouldn't it? Oh, anyway. We're gonna keep on keeping on. I don't need no iron in my diet. I get enough of it every day. All right. I think I'm doing good. Give it a little whirl squirrel. Yep. Watch your ears, people. Now that's using a plug all the way down to a nub. I don't know if you can see it. Don't need to focus. It's nothing there. There's nothing you can even focus on. There we go. Like I say, I think it's important to show this, and I know it's I've shown it before. But it is important to show this. See in the inside of my drill mark? There we go. See inside of my drill mark? You can see the crack. So even if you didn't have a Magnifux, once you start drilling, it just wants to get in the crack. So I'm hitting the center of it. If I miss it just slightly, I'll move left or right. And I want to hit it in the center. I'm putting the plug there. My plug is going to interlock with that plug. We're almost there. To grandma's house we go. Look how far we got to go, but look how far we've been. All right. now I'm going in a little further so I can use some of these older plugs Back in the day, way back in the day, when I'm doing this like a top, 
I used to ride my 100 Suzuki, didn't have a license then, I was so young, over to the shop and we would charge $5 a plug and that would make a dollar a plug. I made pretty good money as a kid. I was always encouraged to work and I would pretty much do plugging all afternoon after school. That in Vegas, we don't need to get into one of those old time stories, but it'd be five hours of plug. When we were done, we would come 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's, that's how we charge. That's not what we charge today. I think it's 20 a plug today. Um, it's not for everybody and it's not for every job, but if you have an old cylinder head like this 200 Ford, um, there's not like there's too many of these around. Um, so. Mira. <laughs> Mira will be Spanish for look. Remember, space age polymers. We would use a copper coat. Copper coat, go to the auto parts, go to your CarQuest or Napa or your auto park that you have in your area. I call a CarQuest or a Napa an auto parts and you may have an old school auto parts, you may have a fl fly by night, you know, we're not going to name anyway. And copper coat we would use as a kid and that worked. Um, you put anything. Some RTD on it. Put JB Weld. Um, it's a tapered plug. It's, it's actually like a pipe plug. What you would do for water, that's how you seal water pipe plugs, even gas fittings, are with a tapered cast iron plug. So if you're in an area where you can't get any of this stuff, think about it. Buy the smallest pipe plug, pipe drill bit, um, and some plugs, and get after it. What's the difference here? We have a tapered reamer that actually reams the hole at a taper before we even tap it. But if you were to drill it small with a small drill bit and then start using a pipe plug, a pipe tap, um, that, that could work. That could most definitely work. And a pipe plug be bigger, you'd have less of them in there. Um, I'm saying if you've got an old tractor, you're somewhere where you can't get to a internet, well then how would you watch this video? Hmm. Well, you know what I mean. Look at that. I still got a couple of threads, but I think I'm done. I haven't broke one yet. And I may... Oh! No, I didn't do it. Just playing with you. I may end up breaking one before the day's through. Watch your eyes. Once again, I'm breaking them towards the, where the plug is, not breaking them this way where it would break underneath the deck. This is extremely hot, so I'm not gonna hold it too long. Um, look, I've pretty much, from the plug that it was, I did say I wasn't gonna hold it too long. And it is hot, but for TV, all right. Woo! Ain't nothing but a song. When you go over a hump, you're going to go over a hump with the plugs. If you were to stay perfectly straight, you could start cutting into the plug and quite a bit. So I'll actually go one way, another way, one way, another way, another way, around a turn. So around a turn, little, little tip is put one plug slightly angled that way, one plug slightly angled that way. If you go perfectly straight, if you think about it, you're drilling into the old plug, which is not a, not a problem, but you don't want to drill all of it when you just have a little um, area that you're drilling. I'm right in the middle where I want to be. I could show you again, but I think at this point you understand what I'm saying by seeing the crack. See how I was hitting that plug and 
I want to go ahead and get the side of that plug so that we can have threads all the way down it. Yeah, it's looking good. How many more thick plugs do I have? I got a few. Let's go all the way down again. Also, the further you go down, the bigger the hole is, and the more that you have area, you're gonna cover with the same plug. So it's more cost effective for the customer as well. There again, sounding like an old bed. I know what y'all are thinking. Stop it. thinking you are tapping the hole or screwing the plug. I know what y'all were thinking. I know what y'all were thinking. I don't think I don't know. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 